So generally, Robinhood has been on my radar for a long time because I, I cover fintech at Forbes, and it's really one of the most important companies in fintech. And they just get a lot of buzz because of the nature of the app. It's a consumer-facing app. It's easy to use, and it's growing really quickly. So the founders are Vlad Tenev and Beju Bot, and they met in 2005 at Stanford. They were in a physics research program together over the summer. After college, they both worked in finance. They had a hedge fund. They sold software to high-frequency traders. But then after the financial crisis, after Occupy Wall Street, the way the story goes and the way they tell it is that um, they had friends who said, you know, you guys are part of the problem um, in terms of inequality and, you know, income distribution. And so they said, well, we're going to start this company. We're going to make an app to democratize finance. That's where they got the idea, to, to create an app where you can trade stocks for free. A market maker is someone who executes trades. The way that Robinhood makes money is that these market makers are paying them. They're paying them, it's called payment for order flow. When they receive an order from a, a Robinhood user, let's say to buy a stock at $100. So this Robinhood user has agreed to buy a stock for $100. The market maker, because it has, because he or she has access to a lot of inventory, can buy the stock for a little bit lower. So let's say they bought it for $99.90. So the market maker is actually only paying $99.90 for that stock, even though the Robinhood user agreed to pay $100. And so that 10 cent difference is what the market maker pockets. So that's called the spread and they're pocketing that. And if you do it, you know, a lot of times it adds up to a lot of money. And so that's how the market makers make money. And so they pay Robin Hood pretty handsomely for the right to execute these trades because every time they're executing trades, they're making a little bit of money. So they're kind of giving them these payments. So every quarter you can see it because Robin Hood has to disclose it. Every quarter they're paying Robin Hood, like in Q2 it was $180 million. In Q1 it was $91 million. So since, the red, since these orders are so lucrative for the market makers, they're willing to pay Robin Hood and other brokers like E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, they're, they're willing to pay them a lot of money for them. I think what is surprising is that is basically just how lucrative this has become and how much money they're able to make off it. So there's definitely a lot of tension between the, you know, Robin Hood's very often um, stated mission of democratizing finance and the way it makes money and its business model of receiving very large payments from these very large trading firms um, who yeah, are, are some of the, the more profitable outfits um, and who, uh, you know, are, are pretty shrewd in terms of, um, in terms of the way they, they operate. More recently, there was this very tragic story of a user named Alexander Kearns, a 20 year old um, Uni University of Nebraska student who was using Robin Hood and very sadly and tragically took his own life. In a note that he left, um, he said, he mentioned Robin Hood and he said, you know, how could I have been given all of this leverage? Essentially what we understand, our understanding of what he did, he did a very complex um, options trade on Robin Hood and he mistakenly thought that he had lost $730,000 um, after investing just maybe 10 or $15,000. We wrote an article, me, um, um, and my two colleagues, um, Sergey Klebnikov and Antoine Gara, um, wrote about it. And it was the highest traffic Forbes article um, in history. It got almost 18 million views. It just brought to light the, um, the kind of worst case things that can happen when someone um, either has access to a lot of leverage or misunderstands what's happening with their money. One thing going into the story that was surprising to me was that even though they've had these stumbles, they just keep growing. They've now gotten to this level of awareness that it's just propelling them forward and that it's gonna be really hard for competitors to touch.